Thank you, Clive. I must atone for my sins. Only then, when it's done, will the monster cease to be. Just promise me that you won't die with it. Now, let's get some sleep. The journey back to Bendemir is long, and there is much to tell the others. knows what awaits us in the Iron Kingdom. But Vivian could probably make an educated guess. I didn't take you for a scholarly van. Oh, this? It's Valisthea, a culinary pilgrimage. I borrowed it from old tomes. Seems there's no creature in the realm so foul, it can't be cooked up into something delicious. <laughs> Think I'll stick to the unfoul ones, thanks. Oh, where's your sense of adventure, Sid? Honestly, one glance at these recipes, and even you would trade in your sword for a butcher's cleaver. From spit roasts to sweetmeats, this book has them all. <sighs> what I wouldn't give to bring these recipes to life. If it's my blessing you're hoping for, then by all means. Well, I'm no hunter, Sid. The first ton of worm I came across would be the death of me. But you're made of sterner stuff. Would you help me resurrect one of these recipes? Something tells me you won't be taking no for an answer. Fine. I'll help. Fantastic! Thank you. So... Dare I ask what's on the menu? Uh, chances stew. It was once a favourite among the Gormans of Oriflam, if the author is to be believed. Though Molly's never heard of it. The only problem is that while the recipe is extremely detailed in most respects, it's infuriatingly cryptic as to the main ingredient. A beast, no doubt. Most likely something that would make easy work of a simple cook with more broth than brawn, but... Unwanted violets? I've no idea what they might be. Does the book say anything else? Well, only that the sweetest violets sprout atop the bed of roses. Roses? Rosaria, perhaps? One of the butchers in Martha's Rest might know something. I'll ask next time I'm there. What can I get you, Sid? Usual then. <sighs> oh, you're not leaving already, are you? Welcome back, Sid. Coming right up. Like you could do with a drink. Shout if you need topping up. <sighs> Don't be a stranger, Sid. Oh, 
once has taken quite a liking to Lady Karen. He's not a monster. And what can I do for you? Coin purse weighing you down. It'd better I'll be here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. There are new billets being posted every day. Clive! Oh, am I glad to see you? Is something wrong? It's Blackford. He ain't himself. And if I'm honest, he ain't been for a while. Now, normally, it only takes a couple of drinks to perk him back up, but not this time. Something's getting him down. And whatever it is, he ain't telling. It's like he's lost his spark, you know? He's barely got enough fire in his belly to get the ump about stuff. But I'm thinking he might if we both bent his ear, because he respects you, innit? So, what'd you say? Fine. If you think it will help. I knew you'd understand. But if he doesn't want to talk, we let him be. He'll open up when he's ready. All right. Now, he'll only smell a rat if we both turn up at once. So, I'll go first, and you can meet us at the forge. Wait a bit, then head over when you're ready. How may I help you today, Clive? Hasn't been delivered yet, I'm afraid.
could have sworn we had a few. That monster's taken quite a liking to Lady Karen. First August, and now you. What are you pair up to? What's it got to do with me? August was worried that something had been weighing on your mind. I thought you might want to talk about it. <laughs> Did you now? I told you not to stick your nose in my business. What do you go and do? Clive just wants to help, innit? What's so bad about that? Talk to him. You never know, you might feel better for getting it all out in the open. Please, mate. I'm worried about you. Phil, shut you up. It's nothing, really. Stupid. Not the sort of thing you bother people about. Why don't you tell us all the same? Karen and I have an arrangement. I keep an eye on Goots, and she shows me what the competition's up to. Interesting arms and armor, things like that. Anyway, the other day, she shows me a cuirass she's come by. Masterpiece of level work. Light, supple, and tougher than it had any right to be. <sighs> Made my stuff look like every clumsy shit. I should have brought the bastard thing there and then just to study it, but I was too proud. Now, every time I reach for my hammer, I'm reminded that I'm not the craftsman I thought I was. There. You happy? You got what you came for. Now, piss off. All right. We're going. I always thought of old Blackthorn as a bit of a force of nature. Like a storm cloud full of ale. Didn't think anything could rattle him. Least of all a stupid piece of leather. Blackthorn's always taken pride in his craft. Questioning it means questioning himself. Something tells me this is only gonna get worse. If he has doubts, it will affect his work, which will only add to his problems. We need to nip this in the bud. I couldn't agree more. He said he should have bought that cuirass. Perhaps we should track it down for him. Assuming you're happy to help, that is. Too bloody right I am. Glad to hear it. First things first, then. We need to speak to Karen. Karen. Do you have a moment? Blackthorn mentioned that you'd recently come by a leather cuirass. An exquisite example of the craft, from what he told us. And he ain't been himself since he saw it. So we thought we'd buy it for him. Sorry, sold it already. Didn't think Blackthorn cared for it the way he turned his nose up. But it was nicely put together, that's for certain. Even if the bloke who made it is a bit of an odd one. Happened across him on my travels. Makes all his stuff to order, but the fella who commissioned it refused to pay. He didn't like the colour of some it. So I took it off his hands for a fair price. You don't know where we might find him, do you? Like I said, he's a bit of an odd one. Doesn't even have a workshop. He doesn't trust hunters, neither, which means he spends as much time out tracking beasties as he does working the rides. I see. He did tell me something, though. Apparently, his next commission's for a set of Griffin Hyde Greaves. Here, there's a griffin on the hump board. The curse breakers were placing bets on who'd bag it. Now, where the bleeding hell was excited? Somewhere in Sambrek, maybe? Cairn Northern, that was it. Thank you, Karen. We'd be lost without you. At least you admit it. So, it sounds like going after that griffin might be the best chance we have of finding our roaming leather worker. I'll leave the hunting to you if you don't mind. While you get on with that, I'll ask around the markets. See if I can't sniff out who he is and where he's hiding. Good idea. 
Hopefully one of us will be able to track him down. If that level worker's even half the craftsman Blackthorn says, someone's bound to have heard of him. I'll do a bit of poking around, see if I can't find something out. Good luck in Sambrek, and watch out for that griffin. They're nasty bastards, they are. Part of me thought Drake's head might be the last crystal we ever cracked. But I'm glad I was wrong. Griffins don't exactly make for easy prey. Let's hope our craftsman hasn't bitten off more than he can chew.
something there, boy. Could that be our man? Say I'll survive. That griffin caught me before I could get an arrow off. Must have lost sight of me in the grass, though. I'd be dead if it hadn't. More likely than not. The name's Camille. I'm a lowly leather worker, if you couldn't tell by the smell of me. Not so lowly from what I hear. Do you remember selling to a merchant by the name of Karen? <laughs> She's not an easy woman to forget. Bought a caress from me after I lost my buyer. Quite taken with my work, as far as I recall. Didn't stop her bartering me down to a pittance, though. <laughs> she sent you for a refund? It's not her who sent me. Well, consider me flattered. You should be. He's a master of his art, and not an easy man to impress. Blacksmiths are proud folk. It's a rare thing indeed for one to praise a glorified tanner. And I don't imagine an impressive swordsman like yourself would be getting your steel from any but the best. I'd dearly love to help a fellow craftsman, but... Well, actually, I suppose you could give him this. What is it? Treated leather. Same stuff I used to make that caress. If your man's as skilled as he sounds, he'll know what he's looking at. You sure? Well, you did save my life. And thanks to you, I'll be going home with all the griffin hide I can carry. I'd say it's the least I can do. Short of showing him how to make the thing myself, that is. But there are rules against it. Secrets of the trade and whatnot. In that case, I'll see that he gets it. I'd be much obliged if you would. Right. I've got some griefs to make. You send your blacksmith my regards. Will do. And thank you. Hopefully this will sweeten Blackthorn's mood. There's two. Fresh cuts. Come and get them. Come. You'll not find a bruised pippin in the bushel. The granaries are almost empty. If you're looking to partake in the meadow's bounty. All I 
anyone ever wants any more is How the hell is anyone supposed to <sighs> Things would have been different had the mother not cracked. Welcome, welcome. An excellent choice. You've a keen eye. And a fine, fine day to you. Thank you for sticking with us. Well, those of us who are still here have to look after each other, don't we? Ah, oh, welcome. Times may be hard, but if you got the gill, I got the goods. What can I do you for? Unwanted violets. If you have them. Though I'd gladly settle for learning what they are if you don't. <laughs> Boy, I haven't heard folk call them that since I was a lad. You're looking for scorpion tails. Unwanted violets is what folk used to call them back in the day. They turn a wicked purple when you boil them up. Hence the name. Used to chuck them in the pot when there weren't nothing else on offer. When there was a war on, that sort of thing. Thankfully, times aren't yet as hard as that. And even if they were, you wouldn't find anyone selling them these days. Do the scorpions still live nearby? I dare say they do. Three reeds would be your best bet. Memory serves. Thank you. You've been most helpful. Stay sharp. After what they applied it to Martha Don't you go causing any trouble. <laughs> Not here. Come on. Yeah.
I better get this back to Yvonne before it goes bad. <sighs> or any worse, at least. You were right, boy. <laughs> And with a bit of luck, Clive might even find the geezer. Bloody busybodies, the both of you. How'd it go, Clive? Did you find him, or does the hunt continue? I found him. And he asked me to give you this, along with his regards. He said he wouldn't teach you how to work it, but that if you were as skilled as you sounded, you'd have no trouble understanding how it was done. Uh, so that's his secret. Crafty bastard. He's layered and cross-grained it. Good few times, too. No wonder it's tough. And that's no ordinary oil he's used to get that finish. Oh, oh, this is fine work. Even finer than I thought. Yeah? I'll take your word for it. Just looks like leather to me. Still, I'm glad you're happy. Here, Clive, you didn't happen to catch the fella's name, did you? Camille, I believe. I thought as much. There ain't many leather workers in the realm daft enough to do their own hunting, see? And his name kept cropping up when I was asking around. Turns out he's from Tabor. And again, most leather workers are. But our friend Camille guards a long-held family secret, the details of which are the subject of some debate in the leather-working community. Then we better keep this close to our chests. Listen, sorry for putting the both of you to all that trouble. Should have kept my moaning to myself. Still, I'm glad you found him. This has cheered me right up. That was the idea. Clive's idea, anyway. He did most of the work. It's good to have you back, Blackthorn. Just don't expect me to go turning out work like this. There's a reason he does his own hunting. He knows exactly what hides to look for. And that's how he gets them to layer up so nicely. And don't get me started on how much oiling this leather would need. But I reckon I can make something about as good. Something a curse breaker will have no trouble caring for. Anyway, enough narrowing. I've got work to be getting on with.
Looks like we won't be needing a new blacksmith. As if there was a better one out there. Nah, it wouldn't have been the same anyway. No one spins a yarn like old Blackthorn in his cups. <laughs> right, now that's sorted. I've got duties to attend to. Thanks, Clive. You've given me my mate back. She's taken quite a liking to Lady Cara. Did you find our mystery ingredient? I did indeed. Marvelous! Let's see. <gasps> what am I supposed to do with this? It's poisonous, surely. You wouldn't be wrong, but that's your unwanted violet. Into the pot it goes, I suppose. Uh, wait here, I won't be long. I present Chance's Stew, risen once again from the ashes of obscurity. Grab a spoon, Sid. Let's eat while it's hot. I'm, uh, not hungry. Well, it'll be too late once I've licked the bowl clean. Your loss. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> Odin's teeth. What the salt on the senses. It's like choking on swamp water. And, and yet, up through the pungency, there rise complex, meaty notes. It, it takes a moment to recover from such an onslaught of flavours, but never have I tasted anything so fine. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. I must share this gift. I won't rest until a steaming bowl of Chancer's stew sits before everyone in the hideaway. A single mouthful, and Molly will be breeding scorpions of her own. I'm sure she will. Back, are you? What do you want?
did we never hear about these guardians of the brain? Oh, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Your benefactors are a generous lot. Here you are. All done? How are you doing? Here you go. Always something in there. Back again, Lord Rosfield. I'm touched that you should find me such good company. <sighs> it is not your company, but your counsel that I seek on this occasion. Ah, <sighs> ever the charmer. What will it be today, then? The Iron Kingdom. I need to know what to expect. You'll soon be setting sail for Drake's breath, then, I take it. The Mother Crystal that rises from the boiling sea. There was a time when a true-blooded Rosarian had only to brave the waves to visit it. But then the Ironblood made their move. As you know, the Iron Kingdom rules over the islands to the west of Storm. Or rather, its church does. But this is not the pragmatic approach to state religion employed by the Holy Empire to manipulate the masses. No, the Iron Kingdom is the literal embodiment of the crystalline orthodoxy. And so, if one is to understand it, one must start there. As the name implies, the orthodoxy holds the Mother Crystal sacred, and they do not take kindly to heathens plundering the objects of their worship for the means to fill wash tubs and light lamps with frivolous feats of magic. Indeed, the faithful consider ether a sinful thing, a poison no less. And to them, a dominant is an instrument of evil, albeit one they have proven only too happy to turn against their enemies. Some 80 years ago in Northern Storm, Drake's eye collapsed. Soon after, in pursuit of Aether and with the Blight at their backs, the Northern Territories descended upon the Grand Duchy of Rosaria. And when the Shields of the Flame marched north to meet them, the Iron Kingdom spied an opportunity. A few short days later, the Crusaders landed on the island of Mount Drastanus, home of Drake's breath, and plucked it from the Duchy's grasp. Rosaria tried to reclaim it, of course, but to no avail. I doubt more than a handful of duchy men have set foot on its shores in your lifetime. Nor are they like to again, under the Empire's stewardship, meaning the Iron Blood will keep their island, and with it, the foothold they need to march on mainland soil when next they spy an opportunity. The Mother Crystal is both the object of the Iron Blood's worship and their gateway to the continent, making Drustinus the holiest of holy grounds, from which the Orthodox Crusade shall one day sail forth to claim the remaining Mother Crystals, or die trying. My father and my grandfather both traded blows with the Iron Blood for control of Drek's breath. Had things unfolded differently at Phoenix Gate, we would have sent our entire fleet against them. But instead, they sent their fleet against Rosaria. Sacked the capital, killed the men, and captured the women, including Jill. 
I'd say you'd be forgiven for wanting a little revenge, Clive. My only aim is to destroy the Mother Crystal. But... Thank you all the same. Not much else to do here. Let's see if Jill's ready. destroying Drake's breath, were you? No. I spoke of Imran, the leader of the crystalline orthodox, the man who made me do all those unspeakable things. I'm going to kill him. It's what I need to do to put the past behind me. What I need to move forward. And I know that I can do it. If you're there beside me. Always. And I'll be beside you, too. We'll bring down the Mother Crystal together. All while Sid looks on. We'll make him proud. <laughs> 